do plant stems grow? First, let's talk about the external stem structures. So here we have a stem with various parts labeled. At the very end of the very tip of the stem is the apical bud, and this is the growing tip of the stem. Below that, we have an internode. So on any given stem, you have nodes where there are axillary and leaf bud primordia growing, and in between you have kind of empty spaces called internodes. So node is where you have axillary buds and leaf primordia, and in between is the internode. And as this plant stem is growing, these internodes get longer and longer, making the space between the nodes longer and longer, which actually helps to reduce competition for sunlight. Now this axillary bud here coming out the side of the stem, you can see another one down here, uh, those uh, remain dormant until they're stimulated to grow. And this usually happens when the apical bud is removed. It could be damaged by frost or heat. Uh, another thing that could happen is a gardener comes along and removes the apical bud. And once they do that, that stimulates these axillary, bud, axillary buds to grow, uh, making the plant bushier. So if you ever heard of uh, someone having a green thumb, that actually comes from this practice of uh, removing the apical bud, uh, hence making your thumb green as you pick it off. Okay, so let's take a look here inside our apical bud. So what you see right now is what would you would see if you cut that apical bud that we saw earlier in half lengthwise. And at the very center you have a place called the apical meristem. And this is actually where you have all your dividing cells. So this is where all the new cell growth is coming from. Mitosis is occurring here. And um, that is forming these leaf primordia, which are these layers you see along the outside. And the leaf primordia have two functions. They can grow into new leaves. They also actually protect this apical meri stem from sun and heat uh, and being dried out by the wind. You can also have axillary bud primordia, but you can't really see them in this particular picture. But that is also found um, in a growing apical bud. So phyllotaxy is the arrangement of leaves on a stem. And uh, oftentimes these arrangements help the different leaves to maximize their uh, sun exposure. So the two most common are uh, alternate, which you see right here. And as you can see at each node, there is a leaf coming out and they're coming out on different sides of the stem. So you've got like one coming out on the right side at one node and one coming out on the left side at the other node. So obviously this maximizes these leaves sun exposure. Uh, another type of arrangement you see is opposite. So in this type of leaf arrangement you've got a node and you've got a leaf coming out of each side on opposite sides of the stem. And sometimes uh, when you see this arrangement it actually twists around the stem so if you have them coming out uh, on two sides, it might turn uh, 90 degrees or so up on the next node so that the ones above aren't shading the ones below. So again, a uh, way for plants, leaves to receive maximum sun exposure. So that's opposite. Another uh, common arrangement you see is world, and that is where you have several leaves coming out at one node. And in this case, you can see four leaves coming out from this node here. Okay, so there are many other types of phyllotaxy, but these are the three most common ones. So let's talk for a minute about stem adaptations. So here's one you'll probably have seen if you have grass in your yard or if you've grown strawberry plants. So there's a person here holding up a grass plant and there is a uh, horizontal stem right across the middle from one grass plant to this new grass plant growing over here. And so these are runners or uh, stolons and this is a way 
for plants to spread and propagate themselves. It's also a way if you have a plant that needs a lot of sun, like grass for example, uh, this is a way for it to grow and receive maximum sun exposure. So it can grow towards where the sun is, it can grow in an area where it's less crowded where it's going to get more sun. Um, so those are runners or stolons. They are above ground horizontal stems. Uh, next we have this uh, is a glongal plant here. So this is a rhizome. So this plant has uh, a structure that is similar to a runner or a stolon, but it's actually underground. So, so uh, rhizomes are underground stems uh, that again help the plant to spread out. And uh, this in particular is a fleshy rhizome. So you see fleshy rhizomes in Galangal and another plant a lot of us are probably more familiar with, ginger. Uh, and those are uh, both fleshy rhizomes. So not only would they help the plant to spread out and propagate itself, but they also are uh, functioning as underground food storage organs. So plants that grow in the desert that are, you are used to not receiving a lot of water uh, develop strategies for conserving water. So one of those is what you see right here in this cactus and that's a succulent stem. So inside the stem there's going to be a lot of fleshy material uh, full of water. And um, some of my relatives from South Texas have told me that they would know which cacti to find when they were out in the desert and they were thirsty or their their cattle were thirsty you could go and cut uh, these cactus open and there would be water or at least like really fleshy stuff inside that you could get water from if you were very thirsty. So here we see another type of cactus. This is the Apuncha cactus and a lot of people think that these big green things here are leaves but these are actually cladodes or flattened stems. So they're big, large, flattened stems. Uh, helps reduce the plant's uh, surface area um, because it doesn't have leaves where it could be losing a lot of water. Instead, it's got spines. I don't really see any here. I see little holes where there maybe were spines at one time. So the actual leaf-like structure on this plant would be spines. And then you have these large, flattened cladodes. Uh, and they're green, so photosynthesis is going on inside these cladode stems and they also help conserve and store water. And uh, those of you who like to eat nopales or nopalitos are probably familiar with these clados because that's what you're eating when you eat nopales. Uh, so here we have a bunch of garlic bulbs. And so these are actually compact shoots. There's a little tiny stem inside and then it's surrounded by a whole bunch of scale-like leaves. And these scale-like leaves are actually where this plant is storing food. Another type of bulb you see a lot are uh, onions. So um, the outer layers are, are dry and that helps protect the inner layers. So those inner layers of the onion uh, and the garlic bulb are actually uh, storing food. And you can see off the bottom here some roots. Um, so again, this is another underground food storage organ, another modified stem surrounded by scale-like leaves. So here we have a corm. You may have seen, uh, if you planted gladioluses, you may be familiar with these. Uh, and these look a lot like bulbs, but they are not bulbs. They're just similar in structure. And these are actually short, swollen underground stems, and they're actually surrounded by these dried up leaves, or dried up leaf bases from the prior year. And you can see some contractile roots here coming out the bottom. And then right here you can actually see little cormels growing, which can actually grow into new corms. Finally, we have the Irish potato or the white potato. Uh, and these are stem tubers, so they're underground food storage organs. Uh, sometimes people get confused and think of them as roots because they grow underground, but these are actually underground stems. So kind of potatoes that you might buy in the store like Yukon Gold, uh, Red Potatoes, Idaho Potatoes, those are all stem tubers. Now sweet potatoes and yams are actually root tubers, but 
got your traditional Irish style potato, uh, then you've got a stem tuber. So uh, to my students, make sure you're reading the book so you're prepared for the uh, module questions and the uh, module test. And thank everyone for watching my presentation.